All right. So today, like I said yesterday, we're going to be talking about programming drums in FL Studio. And it's actually very, very easy. So, this should all look familiar. I have a certain template that I have set up where I've routed everything past this bus 1 to go to here and past this bus to go to here. That way if I have like a kick drum that comes in I can side chain it so that when the kick drum comes in it lowers the volume of all the other instruments in the other bus which can be very helpful. But anyway let's get some drums in here. lo-fi. I'm gonna check the... so I guess before I do that. So I've loaded it just like I would any other sound file. I just take it from over here in my directory and you notice you can preview a sound just by left clicking it. Which is very helpful. Um... Let's get a, some cats, a kick drum, uh, and that should be good for now. So you notice just like the sound file it shows you, just like the clock sound file I had yesterday, it shows you the sound file here and how loud it is. So you're going to want to go and normalize all these. So they're all a similar volume. And when you have one selected and it shows you what you have selected when you left click on one, there will be a little uh, yellow icon right here. And you can even touch on your keyboard. And it'll act sort of as a keyboard, like a musical keyboard. But uh, if you and if you have a actual MIDI keyboard in front of you, like I do, you can do that as well. But what's really cool about how FL does it is, uh, you right click on one of these if it's a drum, or I guess any any sound. But you're gonna want to do this for only drums. Fill in each two steps. So for 130 beats per minute, which you can set here, we'll set it to 120 it'll fill in every um, other count. So I'm going to go on the grid, go to bar, and lay down my pattern that I just did. And press the space bar to play. So now I'm going to check my levels. La 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 now we're going to have the kick drum. Let's just fill in some spots for that. And that's our clap that we had before. So, so all right, I'm checking for any questions, no questions. OK. So that's a very basic beat. And you'll notice uh, right now it doesn't matter how short this is because it's just going to loop over and over and it will match the length of whatever you're writing. And you right click and hold if you want to delete any of the patterns that you put down. Thank you. Cutie. You're cutie. Um, to make the hi hats less boring you can go in and this little icon view piano roll will allow you to edit the notes that you have for that instrument on this pattern. And right here, it's on velocity by default, which just means volume. So if you go to each and every other note, you can hear the difference that it makes there. Or you can do something like this. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. You can also change things like panning for each one of these little notes, which can be fun. And there are some other uh, 
variables here you can change to like frequency, which is interesting. And then we're just going to leave that alone. But yeah, if you go into piano roll while you have this, the kick selected, it'll show you the kick. And you can change that how you like. There's also a swing meter right here, which will add more swing to your music, which what that means is when you're counting like one, two, three, four, instead of that, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to, here, I'll see if it'll do it. Yeah, you can hear it. The reason it's, it's not audible with this pattern is because there's no notes in between because it doesn't touch uh, the beats one and three it only messes with beats two and four it's just pushing beats two and four closer to one and three that's basically what swing is So yeah, um, so for this pattern, we're going to go over here, left click on this plus icon that was there, and you can name your new pattern. I never do because I think it just, it's a lot faster, it'll automatically name it for you, pattern 2, then pattern 3. Um, and we're going to add like a, let's add a bass line to it because that's going to be a little different since we're going to be working with note and note lengths instead of just percussive hits. So I have some 808 basses here that I downloaded for free. You can, you can get thousands of free sounds on the internet if you just look it up on Google or whatever, depending on what you want. So we're in our new pattern. If I was in pattern one, which you can scroll through your patterns by scrolling up and down on the mouse wheel. If I go to a new pattern and then I have my base that I just made selected, I'm going to normalize it. And then there's a little setting here called crossfade. What that does is normally when you press a note, it just plays whatever you have selected and when it comes to the sound's end, it ends. But if you have crossfade on, and you can uh, experiment with how much crossfade you want, like I'm doing here, it actually visually shows you what it's doing. It uh, There's a little red line here. It's hard to see with this waveform. But when, this, when the sound is done playing, it's going to loop back to where that red line is. So if I hold the button now... You can hear that it's just looping and it's on repeat and that's good for things like 808 bass lines because you're going to want them to repeat I, I would say because you don't know how long you're going to want the note to be held down for so that's good for that and then so we're going to lay down a new pattern probably stretch it as far as our drum patterns are going to be for you go to the piano roll like you did and if you press the space bar, it'll play the drum track because it's playing through the playlist, which means it'll show you here too, which is nice and handy. So I'm just going to make up a bass line. So yeah. Now if you want to copy and paste, let's say, this over to here, you right click, drag it as you're holding your right click down. You can let go then, and then you press Control C and then Control B. It'll just duplicate it. And you can continue pressing that and it'll keep duplicating over and over again. And if you want to undo something, you press Control Alt and Z. 
back to where we had it. So, and now you have a baseline for your drums that you just programmed. I created a new pattern. Um, now you can go in and route these one by one onto the mixer if you want. But that could take a while, so what a really fast way to do this is double clicking left. It will select all of these, and then you do the same thing, right click, go to channel routing, and then route selected channels starting from this track. It will do them all in the order that you selected, so from top to bottom, from left to right. Saves you a lot of time. Speaking of time, how much time do we have? All right, we're right at the 10 minute mark. Cool. So that's basically drums, drum programming in FL. Uh, if there's another topic that you'd like me to cover after this, just let me know and I'll be doing it the same time tomorrow, 1 p.m. my time. I live in the US, so. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know the time zones. It's Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Eastern, it's Easter time over here. So set your clocks to Easter, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> see ya.